Hello all, Arcagus here, and despite being stuck at home for a couple of days with the flu, uh, I promised a few of you I'd get this review out as quick as I possibly could, so here we go. So in this video, I'll be setting up and testing the Dell UltraSharp 34-inch 2015-year model curved ultra-wide monitor, the Dell U3415W. Uh, this is the third iteration of this panel, originally produced by LG. Like the latest LG version, it is curved and runs at 3440 by 1440 resolution. But this version is a DisplayPort 1.2 version, which supports DisplayPort chaining for multiple displays from a single DisplayPort from the PC. Uh, but it does this at the cost of providing no Thunderbolt ports. So I'll be replacing three Dell U3011 monitors with this single ultra-wide display to test its viability as a single monitor replacement for surround gaming and multi-monitor productivity. So first, unboxing and setup. In the box we receive the factory monitor calibration report for manual display, display calibration. Uh, more on that later. Uh, the stand packaged separately and a utility box with the back plate for rear cable management, a driver's disc with a user's guide and HDMI, USB 3.0 upstream, mini display port, and power cables. To get the display out of the box safely and properly, you simply open the top side of the box, insert the stand in the back of the monitor and snap it in place, then lift the monitor out of its packaging and set it down in its upright position. The first challenge I had uh, setting up the monitor was discovering how tedious removing all the excess cables left behind by transitioning from three displays back to one uh, truly entailed. Getting all of those disconnected and moved out of the way uh, became a bit of a task within itself because of below the desk the cable management was a bit of a nightmare simply because the desk had been in use for so long. So the next problem I encountered was during the initial setup of the monitor in Windows. An unknown TUSB 3410 boot device started showing up in Device Manager. I went ahead and installed the Dell Monitor Driver and the Dell Display Manager application from Dell Support Site, and the unknown device was still there. I compared those two against what was offered on the driver CD that came with the monitor and found no additional software to use. So next I went to LG's site to see if they had any additional drivers for this panel that Dell wasn't offering. But the only drivers they had available uh, in addition to what I was already using was stuff for Thunderbolt functionality that doesn't actually exist on this display. So finally I went to Texas Instruments uh, technology page for the TUSB 3410 chip and downloaded their reference driver. Now this driver worked in the sense that the device no longer showed up as an unknown device, but now it would continuously de-initialize and re-initialize, forcing it to drop off and be redetected by device manager and reinstall. And it would do this every couple of minutes until finally I decided to just unplug it and troubleshoot it later for a device conflict, maybe with the Spider 4 Pro which seemed to also disappear when the 3410 would disappear. But just in case, I went ahead and created a Dell feedback incident and submitted that to Dell uh, uh, in case this might be a larger issue that requires their intervention. Initially, I didn't want to troubleshoot the Spider 4 Pro because I thought I would still need to use it to calibrate this display. But as it turns out, the Dell Display Manager application proved much more robust than I expected. So with the DDM, users can actually change the monitor's calibration settings dynamically on the fly uh, based on the application and or screen zone that you're using. So basically the DDM gives you the option to organize the display into multiple regions, much like a productivity user would compartmentalize across multiple displays, and each region would have its own calibration preset assigned to it. Not only that, but the default settings provided with the DDM proved comparable and comprehensive compared to the custom settings I had established with each of my previous monitors using the Spider 4 Pro. 
So essentially, once I turned on the auto configure uh, feature of the DDM and set it to use specific presets by applications, I pretty much forgot all about manually or programmatically calibrating the display for my office and use the, the display as is. The DDM configuration also seemed to address the bleed I noticed uh, when I first started up the monitor. During startup and shutdown, there's a noticeable backlight bleed in the upper corners of the display. But once the DDM configuration uh, took effect in the uh, actual system operation and uh, during application use, the bleed became unnoticeable unless you were actively looking for it. Another byproduct of the DDM was movie viewing with the, with the display. So normally I don't watch movies with my PC, but the movie preset of the Dell Display Manager was so well done that during testing of the display, movies became very compelling and satisfying to watch. The 21 by 9 aspect ratio is already a perfect match for a lot of the cinematic content that's available. And the DDM movie preset handles colors, blacks, brightness, and contrast intricately well uh, for a very natural and immersive viewing experience. The only flaw I saw in this preset was in transitions to particularly dark scenes, uh, where the DDM would effectively uh, disable the LED backlight which probably works perfectly well in a dark room, but not so well in a nominally lit, lit uh, office. I did check the DDM settings and that setting can be changed. So it's not a major drawback, but at the same time, I can understand why by default they would expect if you're watching a movie, you're gonna be doing it from a darker setting rather than from a well-lit office. Uh, ultimately, I didn't even bother changing the one on mine. In other, in other aspects of testing, the display continued to surprise me in both form and function for the different purposes I needed to use the display with. Uh, the ultra-wide aspect ratio proved just as productive as I could have hoped for when it came to laying out my authoring software with my drawing and modeling application and my scripting applications uh, in various panes and columns and configurations. And with the DDM auto configure mode, I would seamlessly transition from one calibration preset to another based on the application I was currently focused on. So this overcomes what I thought was going to be my largest challenge in transitioning from a single, uh, from multiple displays to a single display in that I was losing those calibration uh, customizations I was used to uh, for each display. Uh, and would have to resort to a single calibration preset or a couple of calibration presets that I would have to manually switch between using a profile switcher, uh, none of which I would have to do with this display thanks to the DDM. Finally, there was the display's impact on gaming. Now, if you're an SLI or iFinity surround display gaming fan, then you know that multi-monitor gaming can be both a boon and a curse. It seems like for every game that, they're, uh, that works perfectly with multi-monitor gaming, there's another game that breaks or hinders your gameplay or forces you to jump through several hoops to get some semblance of a gaming experience stood up. On top of that, there are additional challenges and obstacles multi-monitor gaming adds uh, to activities like live streaming your gameplay or recording your gameplay for YouTube. So in adopting the U3415W, I was hoping to overcome many of these challenges and obstacles, and for the most part, I did. With its ultra widescreen aspect, the display still provides a uniquely immersive gaming experience, and because it's a single display, applications like Shadowplay and OBS are still able to function comprehensively well. Uh, that having been said, getting games to recognize and use the ultra wide resolutions was hit or miss at first. Uh, many games, like Far Cry 4 and Wolfenstein The New Order recognized and worked with the 3440 by 1440 resolution without a hitch. While other games would either recognize the resolution but fail to use them, like Assassin's Creed 3, or would refuse to rec recognize the resolutions and would drop down to something ridiculously low, like 800 by 600, uh, like Diablo 3 would do. 
thankfully, for most of these games, there are workarounds. Um, in the case of Diablo 3, it will support ultra-wide resolutions, but only in a windowed or full-screen borderless windowed mode, but not in a full-screen application mode. And Assassin's Creed 3 has a third-party patch available now for proper rendering and ultra-wide res resolutions. Uh, as an avid multi-monitor gamer, I would strongly recommend checking the widescreen gamer forums online for any game titles you're interested in, and they can tell you if your desired format is supported, uh, either natively or through one of their several configuration changes or applications available through their site. All right, so overall, I'm really happy with uh, this monitor, so much so that I'm not even thinking about uh, re-upping my desktop configuration with one of my U3011s as like a secondary display, at least not anytime soon. Uh, and honestly, I'm not sure I could fit one of those on here uh, sufficiently with this large of a monitor squarely placed anyway. But this display performs so well in all the aspects I need to use it in that I'm not missing the extra screens at all any, uh, regardless. Uh, as far as recommendations go, if you're upgrading from a 24-inch or 27-inch single monitor, uh, a 34-inch ultra-wide is pretty much a no-brainer. Now, whether you go with LG's flat version for a few hundred dollars less, or you should spring the premium for this curved version from Dell, uh, it's entirely subjective. I can't recommend it enough myself, but I have to caveat that with the acknowledgement that not everyone will notice or appreciate the curve. If you're all about immersion, the curve might be right for you, but to each his own, and your mileage may vary. I will say that after only two days, I can't imagine playing without this curve anymore. Uh, so there you have it. My experience with the U3415W, and overall, my extreme satisfaction with it, despite a potential flaw. If it turns out that uh, the TUSB3410 boot device is something more than just a device conflict on my end, I'll update this video with Dell's response and solution once they're available. Um, other than that, thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video and feel free to subscribe. Uh, I'm still working on the physics and SLI benchmark videos for the 750Ti and the second 780Ti respectively. Um, hopefully I'll finish editing those and get those up pretty soon. Thanks again for watching. Okay, us out.